Discord button. There we go. There you go. Okay, great. No, yeah, yeah. Great. Thanks for the catch. That was okay. that would have been bad. <laughs> Anyways, I I uh, I won't. Uh, I'll leave the uh, introduction out this time, but but please, Guang Li, take it away. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, uh, very much for the introduction and also the invitations. And I will very, very much look forward to share my uh, research, also our uh, current progress, especially uh, the, the one I found interesting in quantum computing, uh, which will take the, the second half of this talk. Uh, but the main topics here today is a uh, slightly border uh, of these topics is talking about the noise and the non -uni uh, unitary method in quantum computing and quantum simulations. Okay, so the outline of my talk are mainly based on the uh, following this uh, flow. So I would uh, briefly talking about the motivations why we care about quantum computing and quantum simulations. Uh, and also um, talking about the noise over here. Uh, although most of the time the noise are uh, hated, let's say, hatred by the uh, experimental colleagues, and they don't really like noise. But uh, <laughs> here I'm gonna talking about the noise either, uh, both in the physics systems and the quantum circuits and show some of our results talking about this noise in the quantum circuits and introducing some other colleagues work. And also mainly talking about this non-unitary method I've been worked on. And at the end, I'm gonna talk about this quantum singular value transformations. Uh, so this is will be the fundamental uh, theoretical background of my uh, future works. Okay, uh, hopefully you can see my shoulder over here. Okay, cool. Right, so for the motivations and of course the quantum simulators uh, that might have different definitions in different uh, subjects. Here we're talking about the using one quantum system to simulate another one. And uh, I'm mainly solving this quantum mechanical problems like low temperature physics, for example, like a second order phase transitions, uh, like shown here, okay, shown here uh, from the mod insulators to the super, uh, super fluid uh, phase in like uh, cold atoms in, in optical lattices. And also uh, try to simulate this behavior of large size systems where the conventional computers might only have the capability of simulating such system around 30 particles and for a kind of sparsely connected a system that can merely go to hundreds. And for example, people are still talking about the mechanism of superconductors, although they have developed like a really nice tools like MPS and DMRG. And also from other side of the physics uh, kind of, uh, communities, people are talking about how to simulate uh, the forming of the proton. And also we're talking about general quantum computers that we usually using a quantum algorithm to solve uh, problems effectively. For example, the well-known Gruber's search problems I basically try to prepare a quantum state that's indicating the uh, target states among unsorted uh, database. And mainly uh, people want to discuss how to solve uh, very major problems in our daily life, like a combinatory optimization problems, optimization problems. Uh, means like uh, try to find the optimal configurations. So uh, for example, like uh, how to solve this traveling salesman problems where he need to go through all the major cities and coming back to the original place with minimum distance. And also the quantum computer can be used for this quantum connection, quantum information processing like quantum uh, encryptions and also the quantum uh, communications here. And here on the right hand side of the slide, I'm just showing the, I think that uh, the Google's, uh, I'm not sure, 
So this is the chips of the Google system. And they are uh, having a reported uh, 53 qubits machines over there. And the, 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 the company is called D-Wave, I think in Canada. They are, they are announcing that they have like a two, more than 2,000 qubits. And they are mainly uh, quantum leaders. Uh, people are referring, their, uh, preferring these names. Uh, and also uh, IBM, they have their own uh, quantum devices. And I think they are really getting really well about uh, uh, 16 or 32 qubits now. And I think they are trying to release uh, like a lot of a lot of scaling uh, machines. And also uh, from Google's devices and also the IBM devices, they are using the architecture calling the superconducting uh, circuits. And D-Wave they have, they're using their Joseph Junction's flux qubits. And also one company I think founded by Corns Moreau in University of Maryland, uh, that was at the INQ. Uh, and they are using a trapped ions system. And also there are lots of uh, university and institute, they are interested in cold atoms in optical lattices, uh, try to mimic the behavior of larger systems and try to use this as a quantum simulators and also quantum computers. So as you will see here, so the, the platform realizing those quantum simulators or the computers are not having a really uh, they have a, a lot of the platform which, is, which are promising in the future. And then also different system uh, were facing different problems and noise over there. And people try to, uh, try to avoid uh, or try to reduce the, the effect of the noise for sure, because that will damage their systems. And especially if we have this uh, essence of quantum uh, will be undermined. Okay. Oh, cool. Right. So when we're talking about physical systems at the noise over there, uh, as I said, different systems have their own problems about the, the how the noise over are looking over there. And usually the noise will of due to the interaction, uh, interactions between the system and environments, and that will causing the decoherence and defacings. And of course, uh, that will be uh, to study, to, to fully understand the noise, uh, how the noise will affect the, the physical systems, and that will go to the uh, regime of open, quantum, of open system physics. And in short, the Hamiltonian with uh, three different components. The system Hamiltonian is the one we want. The environment, well, uh, having a mainly uh, what is outside the machines and people usually take it as our uh, ideal reservoirs or, or, or something like a really a toy models. And that interaction is really under, uh, introduces the noise to the systems. Uh, for uh, taking these two examples over here, so for the superconducting uh, qubits, uh, it looks like this one, and uh, they are facing the problems like because all the interactions between the qubits are mainly microwave couplings, and uh, that might have a leakage of the microwave uh, waveguides. Uh, and also they are facing the uh, problems about, uh, well, <clears throat> they are facing a problem with called energy relaxations processing. So the uh, qubits will intend to go to the uh, ground states of the spins. And then also trial with the trapped ion system. Uh, unexpectedly, the gravity will be uh, one of the problems because they have to lift the uh, ions uh, in the vacuums. And also the gravities were actually causing uh, the uh, decay or, or they, they, they were also undermining the lifetime of the uh, trapped ions. And uh, for example, they might accidentally lose one or two of the ions at the edge of the systems.
Okay. And uh, here in the noise in the uh, quantum circuits, and uh, that that noise, all people are also referring this uh, errors, and that due to, for example, uh, in the language of uh, quantum operations gates. So when we try, they try to implement the gates, they have the fidelities or the infidelities over there. And at the end of the circuits, uh, it requires the uh, people to actually taking the measurement uh, in computational basis or the either, excuse me, or the basis they want. They also referring, they call it readout error. And also the noise channels. Basically, you can think of this one is like an unexpected quantum uh, operations that is not supposed to be there. And uh, here uh, I want to introduce, uh, this is the IBM system. I think uh, this one is open to the public, at least for their uh, a small size, uh, some small sized uh, system, uh, definitely open to the public. And for people who are interested in play with the actual hardware, this, this is a place, not nice place to go. And here they're having these 24 qubits machines. And uh, they have the architecture like, like, like this one. So you can see uh, because of the uh, like sparse connections and they uh, kind of have a limited abilities to expanding uh, a really nice full connected uh, quantum circuit like uh, the one on the left. Uh, and also the uh, okay, I hope you, you could see this one clearly. So they have these two cubic gates and they're having these uh, noise range slightly around 5%. And the radar error is in same levels. And T1 is usually, they call it the energy relaxation time. That's the circuits, oh, sorry, the qubits intended to uh, jumping back from the excited state to the ground state. Of course, that will be one of their uh, determined the lifetime of the, uh, of the circuits and T2 are from the coherence time. And here is the, uh, one of my uh, colleagues' uh, uh, works talking about how to uh, detecting or mimic the, the behavior of the quantum noise uh, in the, the circuits using MPS method. So that is referring to quantum noise. Okay. And we're uh, going back a little bit talking about uh, the infidelity of the gate operations that usually because of the microwave pulses and the uncertainties of these rotations. And that usually could be referring as the, the classical uh, noise in the circuits. Here is a really uh, small examples of our previous work. And uh, one of our colleagues in the uh, engineering, our Florida engineering department from the Florida State, and to say, okay, could we just uh, build a circuit to calculate the Gaussian quadratures? And here is the short circuits of this one, how to realize that. And uh, actually, when we actually implemented on the IBM hardware, it wouldn't give us a really nice result. And give, this gives us a source like, okay, is that must have some of the uncertainties within there and also some quantum noise. But uh, we're only thinking of this effective behavior of the classical noise and try to absorb it as the rotation angle uncertainties. So here is the circuit over here. So there, are, uh, I think there are uh, nine angles over here we're talking about. And the, the uh, simple task is basically preparing the ground uh, the states and then measure it to, uh, to, est, uh, to get the Gaussian quadratures an integral of the cosine squared. And then from the experimental feedback or the measurements, we'll try to estimate uh, what is going on and what is the uncertainties of these 
at different angles. Here on the left is the one we fit in. And here's the right of their, okay, I might have different tables over there, but uh, uh, yes, so, yeah, I know, sorry, uh, I got the wrong table, but uh, uh, the main results over there uh, basically saying that there was around uh, five to 10% of these uh, deviations from this normal value, the, the values we fit in. And we try to add analysis of this one and build up a model of, okay, for example, if we fit in the theta one as another values, what is the effective angles that is uh, actually implemented on the circuits? And from that models, we're using that, uh, to form that model, we use the Bayesian estimations of these angles and talking about the uncertainties over there. And we build up the models and then we just uh, try to uh, pick up one, pick up one of the uh, angles. Here is the plot showing that we pick up only the one to varies and the other angles were, ex uh, were examples from our models. And then we see, okay, we do the sweep and try to figure out what is the next step, what's the uh, what is the angles uh, combination that will give us a better resource? And then we try to uh, test it on the hardware. And usually that is kind of having uh, something similar to the optimization uh, processings. But here we luckily, uh, from our model, where that only, only requires only one more steps, one more of the iterations, and it will give us a really nice results. We're having these uh, manuscripts in preparations. I'm hopeful that I could share it with you guys soon. Okay, so we talked about how to detecting the classical noise in a quantum circuit. And now let's go back a little bit, talking about what could we do using the adiabatic state preparations. So as is uh, as is stated, the <clears throat> the state preparations or what does that mean for the adiabatic? It tries to smoothly change the interactions parameters uh, of the controlled Hamiltonians and uh, guide the system to evolve. The adiabatic state preparation are really helpful, depends on the target states. If the target state encoded some of the answers of uh, for example, uh, minimum energies configurations that could be, uh, that will uh, equivalent to what is called adiabatic quantum computing. And if that target state is the, the, the initial state of the next uh, step of uh, experiment, and that is referring to the adiabatic state preparations, and that target state are usually hard to separate, uh, prepare directly. And from the adiabatic, adiabatic theorem, we can start from a very easy prepared state, uh, which is have the H naught over here. And also with that we slowly move, the here is example of this uh, linear interpolation. So this uh, initial Hamiltonians over there and our target Hamiltonians over here, we smoothly change it. And that if we have infinite time, well, we'll end up with the target states or with, we will end up with the system are really close to the target states. But there are issues. Uh, the first one will be that because of the process, uh, we have limited time and how sensitive to this decoherence or the noise around the critical points uh, where, where, where the minimum gap happens and also how the noise will affect this adiabatic process. And this is our previous work. I try to figure out a small alternations about how the system evolved. Usually the noise here over there, uh, here, which introduced here will cause heating and uh, will damage the uh, quantumness and reduce the fidelities and all because of the 
heating introducing the adiabatic condition will be uh, jeopardized. And but here we're just uh, talking about evolving the system adiabatically, but with the random time step of this uh, certain distributions. Uh, for example, if we're talking about the system Hamiltonians over there, the H naught of T is the uh, system Hamiltonians, and this part would just uh, express uh, uh, presenting uh, stochastic variables over here. So this together over here, that is a random variables of the time step. And uh, applying such techniques will effectively mimic the uh, mimic the behavior of this quantum zero effect and basically simulating a projection measurement onto this instantaneous eigenspace. And over here, because this is noise involved, so the system will no longer a unitary, uh, are no longer evolving on the unitary uh, operations and the state will becoming a mixed state. We represent it using these uh, density operators and uh, the line over here representing the, the ground eigenpath of the systems, which has, uh, if we have infinite small time, uh, small time step infinite long times, the system will go along with this line. And the, the collective behavior of the system will be running close to the ground state over here. And at the end, that will be end up with higher fidelities. And of course, we try to uh, calculate the, uh, the time cost of these techniques. And this is the usually conventional expressions of the uh, adiabatic state preparation. The evolving time usually taking one over, or uh, one over uh, where uh, delta square uh, cubed, where delta is the minimum gap is. So that is the estimation of how slow uh, it should evolve of the system. And using our method, the scaling could be just a, um, a, equivalent, a proportional to the delta inverse, inverse delta. So for a system that has a really small uh, spectrum gap, uh, the evolving time could be uh, much smaller than the conventional ones. So here, uh, basically that mainly means that introducing the randomness or uh, the noise that do speed up the adiabatic processings. And if we try to uh, calculate what's the behaviors or what is the, uh, the system uh, dynamics uh, in the Y noise limit that will go through this one, uh, the equivalence of this a noise strains, and this is the lint platform of the of the uh, master equation. So I will jump a little bit about these cold atoms in optical lattices. As uh, quantum simulators, they have many uh, merits of this system. For example, have long coherence time, and they have having a lot of like uh, optical tool circuits, uh, which is well controlled. They, uh, I think they can manipulate the positions of these atoms with really high positions. And uh, of course the bose hubbard model or the fermi hubbard models have uh, direct connections to the easy models and uh, characterizing the practical systems. And of course, the key challenges is try to prepare the low temperature many body states and also try to find out what's the noise and the coherence behavior of the systems. And of course, the man, one of the major uh, methods they're using is the adiabatic state preparations, uh, but the influence of the classical noise on the lattice still remain unclear. So, Next one, I'll just uh, introduce the one of our previous work over here. So these amplitude noise of the laser beams, because they have the, I think this is the strength of these uh, amplitude of the lasers. Of course, they have their a little bit shaking over here 
characterized as a delta V over here. So the laser intensity fluctuations will causing the, the, the shaking of the, the optical lattices. So the J and U, which are the parameters of interactions will be having another uh, noise term at the end. And of course, the uh, frequencies of this orders of block band are just uh, having either the interband transitions. So if the noise is too high, the atoms will be excited to the higher band or if have a merely short noise uh, where the frequencies of the noise is in order of J and U that will only causing the intraband heatings. So this is the kind of noise which you try to interest you, uh, interested and uh, we'll keep asking that, is it possible to actually using this noise uh, as a assisting noise? So we're talking about, uh, so sorry, they are talking, they talked about this empty noise and how this one will cause in the heating of the systems and the calculates the heating rate. And then they found out and uh, they on the sweet spots where the, where the heating will be, can be exactly zero. And if this formula, uh, if this is uh, having the, sorry, uh, if this one is uh, fulfilled and basically means the noise terms will be proportional to the one of original Hamiltonians, and they try to characterize with this angle theta over here, and they calculate the heating rate over there. So basically in uh, around this, uh, sweet spot, the system is actually resilient against the noise on the sweet spot over here. So this gives us uh, uh, ideas or try to using this one to realize the previous introduced the randomization method. So without too much details, so the both harbor models or the effective both harbor models uh, with the system on the Swiss board will be looks like this one. And the noise strings, you can see that is really similar to the previous Hamiltonians over there. And the task we're trying is try to start from the initial state, which is the, which is the ground state of the mod insulators, where the U over J will be, uh, much, uh, will be much larger than one. And then what we want is in one to find I end up with the states of, which is the ground state of a super full phase over here. So here, so here is the resource. We're talking about 16 particles on 16 size. And if, without this uh, manipulations of this noise or introducing the noise over here, uh, because we have limited time T times J or just the one over here, which is considering kind of short one, and the final fidelities of the preparation are, are barely more than 20%. And now with, as we increase the noise strength uh, gamma over here, so we can see the, the fidelity is actually increasing uh, significantly. So this improvement of fidelities along this in, uh, increase of the noise strength, and that basically means that we have this quantum zero effect near the critical point, which is surpass the non adiabaticities And also the, here the plot showing that when the de theta, when we are not really uh, on the uh, Swiss board, uh, that could be still useful over here. Now we can see this parabolic uh, shape of the uh, imperfect implemented noise and uh, of course, we go to the two level system, try to figure out what's going on over here. And uh, without too much details, so I'm just saying that having this noise uh, will actually, if this is the fidelities of the system, uh, along with the instantaneous ground state, as you can see. Uh, here, the start from the one, of course, and this is the critical areas where the, they meet the minimum gap. And after this one, the fatigue will be drops over here. And, uh, uh, and 
a different color shows different strains of the noise. And we can see, for example, this line, uh, this plot over here. So this green one demonstrating when gamma equals to five and uh, fairly uh, a strong noise and the blue one uh, is just here. So you can see the uh, defacing effect or the quantum zeno effect really worked along the, along the critical area and uh, uh, try to uh, protect the adaptivities within this regime. Okay, uh, so this is my uh, previous work. So we can see, to summarize a little bit, is that uh, uh, having a certain type of noise, and uh, although it might not be a perfect engineered noise, that could still helpful, and uh, mainly because of the uh, quantum zeno effect, the phasing effect, uh, of this adiabatic state preparation or state transformations. Okay, so the next one will go to a little bit of technicals, uh, but uh, this one, uh, this this pipe articles is we found like interested, uh, and I think this proposed by uh, one of the famous uh, authors who wrote this quantum computing and quantum information textbook. Is the ASIC from the claim they have this uh, grand unification of the quantum algorithms. Uh, here, I, this will be uh, the fundamental basis of my uh, previous, uh, sorry, a uh, future works. I would like to share this one to you guys. Maybe you found this interesting and uh, we can talk more about this one. Yeah, so the main idea uh, this what is called quantum signal processing. And previously when we we're talking about the quantum gate operations, there, there will be a requirement of that gate is definitely need to be uh, unitary uh, operations. But actually when we're talk, thinking of uh, a conventional circuits, they are not actually a unitary ones. That they, they are, they, they are only a bit, designed mainly based on the Boolean functions, calculations. And there were, so the unitary of the quantum uh, computing is necessary for, uh, to, to implement, but not necessary to design. So there were several ways of how to actually design the quantum algorithms. One is try to copy or try to having a quantum version of the classical algorithms. So they started from the classical algorithm and they realized the reversible version of the Boolean functions and then try to have design or their own quantum circuits or quantum algorithm, for example, like the Schultz algorithms. And also several uh, examples like Grover's search algorithm, they are designing this quantum Fourier transform, which has a, a quantum version of the classical Fourier transform. And also we can design, directly design the quantum circuits uh, to calculate the Boolean functions. And that usually requires the non-unitary, uh, non-unitarity of the subsystem of quantum circuit. So the whole circuits, the whole system will be still on, um, evolving under uh, unitary operations, but the subsystem can represent this non-reversible nonlinear functions. And this is the quantum signal processing for this quantum system and subsystems. And uh, I would like to give you a short examples about this, how these things works. So that usually call it using the oracles or the black box over there, and mainly consists of two operations. One is the uh, signal W matrix and uh, the signal processing matrix S over here. And usually the conventional uh, definition will be the W over looks like this one, it's a rotations around the X axis. And uh, the signal processing uh, matrix will be similar to this and that rotations. And usually the A work here is the signals that we want to 
uh, process and that values of a usually constant. And then we will try to de design a sequence of this quantum uh, signal processing uh, file over here to fit into this uh, processing matrices and the sequence after the after several steps, uh, also steps of D over here, or it looks like this uh, huge unitary matrix. And of course, you can here uh, see that if the uh, the file over here are just uh, zero and zeros, there will be identities uh, over uh, on the left and on the right. The if I may, the, the the final matrix will be just the. Uh, or it just looks like an identity is after this signal processing. And if we're talking about the probabilities of certain input and output, basically that is the uh, subsystems. We start from the zero. Uh, we start from a zero state after the processing. When we're talking about the fidelities, that the initial state will still remains in the zero states, and we calculate the probabilities. And we fit into a sequence of this C that over here, a file over here. We could calculate the probabilities, and that will be uh, that will be uh, uh, a function of the C that over here, where theta could be related to our to our signals over here. So the trivial one will be looks like this one if without uh, without the processing, and after this pro processing. There will, be, there will be certain uh, values of the theta will be uh, amplified by these processing. And if we're talking about the how to actually uh, functioning, uh, sorry, uh, if you're talking about how this one works, so that is actually going uh, undergoing a polynomial transformations of the uh, theta over here or the signal over here. And how many steps or the depths of the processing will be related to the rank of these polynomials. And of course, that's refer, we can easily implement it as uh, amplitude amplifications methods to to realize the Google's search algorithms uh, and this A and B matrix are given, uh, given by these rotations. And uh, we try to build up the initial, we try to build up circuits that, add, that ampli amplify the amplitude of this uh, matrix from almost zero to one. Yes. So, so the amplitude amplifications uh, methods over here are uh, mainly the, as we previously mentioned, that that requires uh, the uh, signal uh, signal matrix and also signal processing matrix that, that can be characterized as uh, two rotations over here. So after the sequence of this applying uh, one by one that could be referring to the alternate rotations along different axes. So then the amplitude of certain values will be amplified. And here is the examples of how this original Gruber's algorithm could be taken as taking this special cases of this unitary uh, matrix U, A, B, and uh, quantum uh, signal processing. Okay, so I would try to order some of the details, but here this, uh, the Google's algorithm are mainly the special cases where you take uh, the, 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 the file over there are just the pi rotations along different axes. And then the two, the two reflections will be looking like a rotation. That is another uh, rotations over there. So they take a step by step and an alternate rotation with the different angles. And then they design this uh, neutral matrix and the Groover diffusion operators. And they try to repeat it 
uh, the square root of n times around, where the n is the size of the database. Okay, so similarly, uh, there's only one value, one values or one signals was, was actually amplified. And of course we can transform the whole eigenspace uh, under the same polynomial transfer functions by different design of the unitary matrix when we having the Hamiltonians A over here, we can use in one extra, uh, one extra ancillary qubits to form this unitary matrix uh, of the double the dimensions of the Hamiltonians and the eigenspace are actually known over here and we want to amplify or transform the eigenvalues of the, of the uh, Hamiltonians. And we want to uh, introduce in this one answer qubits and if we're talking, uh, thinking of the qubitized uh, system or the subsystem of, this, uh, of, the, of the host uh, system and uh, the unitary matrix could be represented as uh, a rotation, two different rotations over here. And uh, everything will be looks like similar to the a signal uh, matrix. And of course, after this uh, quantum eigenvalue transformations that requires this projection operators that's uh, uh, along these anthro qubits and this controlled phase gates over here are just uh, giving, this, uh, giving this angles that undergoes the sigma processings and that is giving us uh, rotations or the driven force of these uh, subsystems. And then of course, there'll be effective that rotations over here if we try to apply this one to the whole systems. So here, their all state is the one ancillary qubits over here, and the phi zero is the systems. And then at the end, after certain designing, we could end up these uh, transformations of this eigenvalue of the Hamiltonians, and the, the designing of the polynomials is uh, non-trivial, and the uh, after the, I uh, think in the supplementary materials in this paper, they give us, they provide like a several uh, example of different uh, sequence of the of signal processing uh, to form different polynomials. Uh, here is the uh, four examples uh, of these, how do they try to, uh, uh, try to mimic the behavior as the sign functions or even the Gibbs distribution they could use for like machine learnings or the cosine function they try to use it as the Hamiltonian simulations or the inversions of the uh, inversions of these uh, single uh, eigenvalues and people could use it to calculate the inversion of the matrix. And similarly, uh, the, that could also apply to the singular values of the transformation, which have a, a more general uh, use, usage around the uh, actual physics. But on the only difference is that uh, the eigenspace will actually, the W and V are actually the, the, the same matrix here that's in the different bases. And uh, I will jump to, to the, I will jump to the conclusions uh, over here that could also designing a polynomial of these all the uh, singular values of the A matrix, which is not necessarily a square, a square matrix. Uh, and based on the similar techniques. And here for the uh, singular value transformations that could be using, useful to design a search algorithm from the 
uh, Groove Oracles, which is uh, giving a different phase of the correct answers. And the, the reflection operations over here. And then this is the signal ones and it can designing uh, amplitude amplifications functions over here. Okay. Uh, I think that's a little too fast. I hope that wouldn't bore you too much, but uh, I would like to summarize the uh, talk over here. So basically we know that the next devices are accessible uh, either commercially or uh, under the collaborations of the institutes among, uh, among institutes and uh, companies. And they're widely uh, studied to assist the quantum computing or quantum simulations or even for machine learning techniques. And there are lots of companies and these that are very interested in, in finding the application of the NIST devices. And also because of the different platform uh, to realizing this quantum circuits, the noise in this system have different source, of course, and that including uh, something could be characterized as classical noise or the quantum noise. And I would I just uh, demonstrate uh, my our previous works, and in particular cases that if we're engineering the noise right, and that could enable assisting noise uh, for the adiabatic state operations or the adiabatic quantum computing for the border subjects. And here later in the talk, I'm just introducing this non-unitary operations in quantum circuits. Uh, which might give us a new approaches or new aspects to design a quantum algorithms. So that's all for my talk. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for a fascinating talk, Guang Lei. Uh, truly fascinating. Uh, it never ceases to be amaze me just how rich the study of noise and quantum computing is. Uh, uh, with your permission, I'd like to turn, uh, or rather open the floor to, for any questions people may have. Uh, yes, please. So I have a question. Um, thank you for the very interesting talk. Um, in your uh, cases that you looked at in the first part of your talk where you're modeling the noise, um, as I understood it, the noise enters as a uh, specific modification to your Hamiltonian um, and for that, you actually need to, uh, you, you, you introduce a model for the noise at the Hamiltonian level. Um, and at least in one example, that model involved uh, what looked like next to, near, next to nearest neighbor interactions. Is that right? The noise itself was also um, a nearest neighbor. No, not next to next, not next to nearest, but nearest neighbor uh, interaction term in your Hamiltonian. Is that is that correct? Did I understand that where you had the noise term appearing as a nearest neighbor interaction term? Uh, are you talking about you're talking about this part? Am I right? Well, when you wrote the Hamiltonian down, you had a sum over i, n sub i times n sub i minus one, uh, in the noise part of the Hamiltonian, as I recall. Mm. Um, back back one more, I think. Mm. It was fairly early on in the talk. There it uh, is. Yeah, a little bit after that, maybe. A specific term appeared, which, no, a little bit, maybe later. Okay. Mm. Is this a well, it was a sum over, it was a sum over I, NI, Times mm -hmm. ni minus one, right? So that is the on um, uh, that is the, there. It is uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. So okay. So this noise, uh, it's uh, it, it, it introduced by this uh, here the the lasers intensity fluctuations. Uh, so the delta v over here is the fluctuations of the uh, intensities later intensities and that will give us the the j and u and extra terms of the delta over here something like this one 
Oh, okay. So now I, I now that I've had another moment to look at it, the noise term is actually a, a one particle interaction term. If you go if you go back to the formula itself, it's a sum over uh, sites i times some um, distribution. Yes. So this and, is and, and the on site interaction. Yeah. It's and an this is usually referring the hopping terms. That's the hopping term, right? Yes. So it's an on site interaction term. Okay. So my my real question is, is that is that uh, believed to be a generally useful version of noise for say other quantum systems? Is that kind of one of the standard versions of a noise model at the Hamiltonian level? Mm, the answer is sadly no, <laughs> because for example, for the the noise or the, the, the fluctuation are introduced by the lasers and the, the lasers actually form you, uh, f forming the optical lattices. So that is uh, the, the same lasers having in opposite directions then they're forming a standing wave. So that you can see this is the shape of these uh, optical lattices. So sadly, this amplitude noise only affected the both harmonic model in this level, both of the parameters over here. Mm -hmm. But that so that is one of the uh, one of the noise that we're facing only at these cold atom systems. Okay, so only those systems, right? Um, yeah, because so we're the reason I'm asking that is the following: we have. Um, a number of examples where we are ex trying to solve Hamiltonian, um, say, eigenvalue problems, where the Hamiltonian that we're given is a sum of one body and two body interaction terms. And it, at this point, if there is a model of noise that would be <clears throat> interesting to, to examine, we could simply add that model if it's at the one body and two body level to the Hamiltonian that we ideally want to solve and examine the role that way. Um, that, that would be a very interesting computational problem for us. Um, so, so the question comes down to how generally interesting is that, that model? And you're saying that it's understood to be um, a model for noise in this particular in optical lattices is what you're saying. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So if the if the Hamiltonians having a similar form mm -hmm. like this one and uh, all it can be transformed to this one. For example, for the Fermi Hubble models that could be transformed uh, into, I think for the quantum easing models. Uh, and I think that goes to the idea of quantum simulation. So the Hamiltonians you, you you mentioned my can, my can be transformed in this post, into these post harbor models, and if we could implement it on the cold atom lattices, mm -hmm. uh, oh sorry, cold atom in the optical lattices. Of course, if we try to simulate the system you interested with the cold atoms, then we could use this noise modeling of this uh, processing of these Hamiltonians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it totally depends on how to realize the Hamiltonians in different systems. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it leads to, to some interesting things to think about um, and would depend upon additional uh, discussions concerning how you actually encode the, the Hamiltonian of choice in the, into right. the qubits. And yes, yes. Whether this, this is using the specific qubit addresses, let's put it that way, which are not necessarily the same way you've encoded the problem of your original Hamiltonian in the in the uh, quantum computing system. And um, yes, to think about here. Thank you very much for the yeah, answer thanks to for my talk. question. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I have a question. Are there yes, quantum please. computers in China made by Chinese? Sorry, uh, could you repeat that again? Are there quantum computers in China? Uh, well, uh, that depends how you define a quantum computer. Uh, we have some, uh, quite a lot of uh, experimental platform 
Uh, most of them are from the superconducting circuits. And there will be uh, at least, uh, so I think uh, there are several teams. Uh, one I know is from what is called Beijing Academy of Quantum Information and Sciences. And they are having some architecture similar to the IBM one. So that mm, is okay. a silver conducting circuits. Uh, and I think we are in the stage of around 10-ish uh, qubits. Okay. So that is a fairly uh, early stage. I wouldn't call it a quantum uh, computer, but uh, that's still comparable to the, quant uh, the IBM version, uh, IBM early version. And also we have I think that's announced in the end of May, I think, that we have uh, uh, another quantum computers, I think also depends on this uh, uh, superconducting platform and from the USTC. And I think that they go to around 60s or 50s uh, qubits, mm -hmm. uh, which compared to the Google's, uh, Google's uh, machines. Uh, but I think that is not accessible to the public, but uh, yeah, we are trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Welcome. Don't you also have that Busan sampling that Pan Group does in Shanghai? Right, yes. Uh, I have people, people still arguing whether this one is a general quantum computer or specially designed quantum machine. But yeah, go ahead, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, so I had a question about the noise. So the use of noise is quite familiar classically with stochastic differential equations. Yes, it is. Has anybody in applying your noise ideas to quantum systems seen any analogies between how it works classically with SDEs? and how it works in what you're describing in the quantum situation? Not on the experimental part. So we hear uh, one, uh, one difficulty is, is try to actually engineer the noise. Uh, so here is the Hamiltonians or the original idea to introduce in this randomness as the uh, randomized time step. So that's go to these random variables and because these SDEs that be, could be characterized or described in the wire noise limits over here. And if we absorb this prefactor to the Hamiltonians, that means we have a fixed time step, a Hamiltonians with one extra term, this noisy Hamiltonian. To realize such noisy Hamiltonians that goes to this, uh, this uh, system noise part that requires a noise engineering to form such assisting noise. So that is a little bit difficult, but these are purely theoretical simulations, quantum uh, simulation, I mean, no, uh, uh, numerical simulations that if we have such noise that could be helpful, but sadly for now, there isn't uh, experiments that actually demonstrating uh, the noise engineering capabilities and all the introducing noise could actually improve the, the state perversion fatalities. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, very nice talk. Hi, uh, I have a question. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking from an algorithmic perspective. Uh, to, to me, it seems like this almost uh, equivalent to the notion of uh, error correcting um, codes in, in uh, you know, information theory, that you add extra, you know, bits to recover from errors. So I'm seeing that it could be, uh, from an algorithmic perspective, adding some, um, changing in changing, making changes in the Hamiltonian circuit to compensate for the noise. Um, uh would it be uh could it be explored at uh, a more systematic level that 
how many changes in the Hamiltonian circuit we do so that we compensate for the noise and have a better fidelity. Can you just comment on it, the, the line I'm thinking on? I mean, am I way off or is it um, in um, line? You, if, we, if we're talking about this part and usually that wouldn't actually require uh, an ancillary cubus or or we can thinking of this, uh, if we're taking the ancillary cubus as uh, environment, and here we're just assuming an ideal environment. So that wouldn't require us to enlarge the dimensions of the system, but only need to engineering the, engineering the noise and uh, the Hamiltonians will be remain the same dimensions. The key idea is that because the, the speed of the evolutions will introducing the uh, non abiaticities and that go to the heatings. And of course, uh, let me go to this one. Yes. So if we go too fast, the system will be excited to a uh, uh, higher, higher energy state and will stay there. The key ideas of this introducing this kind of noise is that before they staying at the excited state, they were projected back to the ground states. And from what I know about the, the, the error corrections or introducing further uh, answer qubits uh, is not the same mechanism as I can think of. Okay. Hmm. Isn't the difference with the quantum error correcting codes you want to eliminate the noise, you're not using the noise. Right. Or, or basically having, I think one of the surface code uh, mainly uh, try to have this logistic qubits. So even though they have some noise uh, wandering around and try to manipulate the, 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 gra the graph or the, the quantum state that's still considering uh, the same thing or the no noise free cases from a further distance or along this logistic qubits. Hi, uh, Wei Jie Du speaking. Um, yep. I have a question that uh, how, what is, a, I mean, can you explain uh, what is a um, quantum Zeno effect and uh, how it can affect the, let's say, the adiabatic system evolution? Uh, okay, sure. So quantum Zeno effect is basically, uh, let's go this way. So the quantum Zeno effect usually referring to a processings that uh, uh, eliminate or try to uh, try to weakening uh, the coherent processes. So, if we're thinking of the the, the quantum zeno effect, for example, if we have a if we have a, a nuclear decay problems, if we try to constantly measure it, see whether it's be, being decayed and uh, of course, the decaying rate uh, will be to the exponential uh, exponential decays. If we measure it rapidly, it will stay at the excited state without without decaying. So this is the the quantum zeno effect. And if you're thinking of this one, that is uh, mainly realized by these projection measurements. Okay, so here these. Uh, we we having this noise and basically uh, uh, simulating the projection measurements. When we're talking about simulating the projection measurement. We mean that these, of course, if we talk uh, talking about uh, one uh, realizations of this uh, randomness evolution. So that will be not that is still considering as the unitary operations. Then they will still go into a pure state evolution at the end. 
if we repeat this process again and again, and of course try to uh, categorize this uh, master question of the emotion of equations at the end that we described by the mixed state or the density operators. So that's where we're close to the projections onto the axis. That make it much closer to the ground state that we're trying to stay on. So uh, if, we, if we go to a fairly faster uh, time evolutions, so even though, like I said, the Dino effect will eliminate some of its coherent processes. For example, because of the non debaticities the ground state will be tunneling a little bit to the higher excited states and they're forming a coherent state between the ground state, or sorry, the superpositions of the, uh, the ground state, also the excited states. And the projection will actually eliminating these coherent processings. So the system wouldn't be excited to the higher energy states. So that will be cutting off. Or here you can see for example, these two level systems. So at the, at the beginning, that will be because we have a really slow evolution comparing to the energy gap over here. It was staying in the, in the ground state or instantaneous like, in, like a ground state over here. But when the energy gap is small over here and our evolution time considering fast, so the blue line over here, that will be excited to the higher energy state and staying over there. But with the projections, that coherent processing or the, the, or the tunneling will actually be cutting off. So there will be uh, weaker effects of this tunneling happens. That's why they go and mainly work on these criteria areas. So yes, the quantum zero effect will actually uh, a defecting effect, and that will cutting off some of the coherent processes. And you might see similar behaviors about people talking about the how to uh, cut the coupling between the system and the environment. People also refer to that one as a quantum zero effect, and then try to prevent the uh, talking between the system and the environment to realize the protections of the coherence of the system or what they call usually as the try to protect the, the, the states or the systems. Does uh, that answer the questions? Yes, yes, thank you. But uh, I have a following up question. Yes, um, um, in your presentation or in your slides, did you define the uh, did you define the technique how do you project the project out the excited states uh, sorry uh project out the excited states yeah oh oh sorry uh, i know what you mean so that is not a, some kind of the uh techniques as we're uh, talking about so it's projection onto states, but uh, we don't have the information of the instantaneous uh, results. So we cannot actually reset to the ground states based on the uh, projection results. So uh, if something happened, so that is kind of like a, a second order uh, behaviors. So if the noise, or the system is uh, system evolves too fast that the system jump directly to the high excited state with all the coupling, then this method wouldn't work because they are mainly talking about the defacing. If we're thinking of the uh, density operators, if we, the, the defacing effect will only works on the off diagonal terms. So they will be having a shrinking in a different size but they wouldn't stop the, the process uh, jumping between the diagonal terms. So this is 
considering the second order effects. So that is how it looks like in, in it's not actually looks like uh, uh, having a projections and reset it and uh, keep going on. So the answer is no, we don't project out of the excited states. Otherwise that will be a good, uh, uh, that will be a good idea so to actually keep that system in onto this uh, instantaneous ground states. Yes, thank you very much. No, you're welcome. Hi, uh, Gongli. I, I got uh, two questions. Yes, please. Um, Jan here, yeah. Um, first question is that um, in real systems, is this noise that you're talking about the main source of the uh, noise of the system, the, the uh, fluctuation of the laser amplitude? Is this the main, the main, the main source of noise? The real system. Uh, that or is can one it of be, them. Mm -hmm. Or can it be tuned to be the main source of the system? Uh, most of the most of the later resource, they try to eliminate eliminate this fluctuation of the intensities. I think this is one of the selling points is that the fluctuation is actually really small. Mm -hmm. uh, the one I omit over here is that how to actually engineer uh, this uh, amplitude noise to affect it to the uh, Hamiltonians over there. I think the, what is called the design is dressed, this, uh, dressed lattice scheme and try to use this energy noise, the uh, amplitude mm -hmm. noise. And uh, the amplitude noise over there, and uh, I think it's getting smaller and smaller. Uh, but uh, yes, it is the main resource, one of the main resources of the, the, the noise over here. And uh, as you can see over here, most of the time, this term will be more, uh, more than zeros. And of course, these fluctuations of the intensity will be uh, heating the, the system. And uh, basically, the, the system or many, I think the cold atoms will be in, in higher excited states or even uh, jump out of the <clears throat> jump out of the the sites. Uh, yeah, so it is a problem, and uh, engineering such noise uh, could refer to a different uh, articles. Right. But most of the time, the engineering part is not based on the tuning the. Uh, uh, amplitude fluctuation because that usually untouchable within the laser machines. I see, but I imagine there will be um, other noises that can be modeled as you know different uh, uh, interaction pieces. Yeah, you know. right, right. Yes. So that is one one of the uh, there was. Certain other noise uh, could be characterized over here. Uh, did I have a both have the models? Oh, okay, so that maybe have a higher order extra terms mm -hmm. after this one. All the noise within the J and U, the the hopping mm -hmm. strains or the onset interaction strains. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and of course we can always have a similar uh, similar one something like uh, this one, one extra term of here. That depends on the uh, the strength of the noise. This one could be really small one and also have a higher order, connect, a higher order co corrections. Right, but high order corrections, uh, what kind of form, is that operator uh, or is that, I imagine that uh, you can see here, the noise is a C number here. It's not really a, an operator, an interaction. No, no, no. I'm just saying that the, uh, right, yes, you're right. So um, that fluctuation here are based on this part, the, U, the J dV and the U dV. Right, so that usually a constant. But if we, if we number, yeah. characterize the, the, the noise as, uh, let's call it, uh, constant variables or other other than this one. I'm going to say high order that we have like a 
three body or four body interactions uh -huh. that's right. right that couldn't be that couldn't uh write in this form this is just a one random variables okay right so that is your yeah. offer referring as uh the the quantum noise so that oh, that's a quantum go... noise okay that's my second uh, what... question actually uh, what's mm -hmm. the real difference What's the uh, real difference between the uh, quantum noise and the classical noise that you are referring to? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, the answer is simple. If we have in this master equation of Lindbach form, we can see this part, usually the uh, the noise operator or some mm -hmm. uh, or some system referring the jump operator. If we're talking about spontaneous emissions, that one usually, uh, the jump operators, but the classical noise having a Hamiltonian or Hamiltonian operator over here. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't have a general form of Lindbergh form, uh, Lin form of the master question, but that is totally different. Right. So, so let me let me ask uh, questions on this one. So, is is this lambda? Um, sorry, this gamma? Is this a C number here, or is it yeah, a function? Yeah, that's a constant. Oh, that's, that's a constant, C number. Right, so mm -hmm. so yes, so this one over here, if we try to uh, calculate the collective behaviors of this uh, unitary evolutions that were directly linked to this uh, one. So this is the averaged effect of a system evolving under this Hamiltonian. Okay. So this but is the unitary saying... version. Yeah, so this is the ensemble. This is the ensemble average of this evolution. Okay, but you are saying that um, there could be other operators in the second term, because this particular yes. one is only the original Hamiltonian. But you are saying that you could have other other Hamiltonians, other interaction operators uh, that introduce a quantum noise. Is that right, your, which is uh, kind of, yes. For example, if you have a uh, for example, if you have a jump operator, spontaneous, um, mm. you could, for example, you could jump from the excited state to the ground state, and uh, the master question form will be, I think there will be three terms, which have gamma rho, gamma dagger, mm. and the gamma dagger, gamma rho terms, and rho, gamma dagger, gamma. So that's not, could, uh, that could not be writing as the uh, Hermitian operator over here. So okay. we're really kind of referring that if the, the noise operator is Hermitian, that could be uh, uh, characterized as a classical noise. Otherwise the quantum noise, this operator will not be Hermitian. Okay, but the bottom line is that you can use the master equation to uh, study the system evolution and in some cases, uh, maybe in also including uh, uh, quantum noises. Um, not all cases you 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 have a bad result. In some cases, what you are saying is that the result is actually improved, including the fidelity and other uh, metrics. Right. Okay. Yes. Interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, the, just one more question. Uh, one more quick question on the. Uh, 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 quantum Zeno effect you're talking about. Is it correct that in order to make use of the quantum Zeno effect, the um, uh, fluctuation or the noise here, uh, the, the frequency or the noise is much uh, larger than the, the gap delta here. Is that uh, the uh, required as a regime? In other words, the fluctuation of the noise is much faster than the uh, evolution of the system. Right, yes, yes, okay, that that's referring to the wider noise limits. So, uh -huh, uh -huh. Great. yeah, okay, thank so you. So, that could jumping around, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, okay, very good, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, if that's everyone's question, so it was a good number of questions and some very good ones, uh, for that matter. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank Guang Lei again uh, for uh, giving us a great talk and answering all our questions. And uh, uh, we, uh, as far as the QCGSS, we don't yet have a uh, scheduled November speaker, but that's liable to change. So uh, keep an eye out for uh, 
an email, which you will which will will be sent out either way. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming, uh, and I uh, hope you all have an excellent day. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much, you everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Finally, yeah.